What is up guys, we are back again with another video and in today's video we are going to discuss the topic of goal creep, okay, that's what I call it um, and it's something that quite a lot of people experience and um, have a difficulty dealing with and we'll get into what it is and then how to kind of overcome it and what you can do going forward so that this whole concept of goal creep stops preventing you from getting results because that's what it does right so let's get into it so again this is just the concept of goal creep so i always call it goal creep because effectively what happens is you will get a goal you will pick a goal i don't know whatever it is a health and fitness goal in this context it could be fat loss for example right but rather than just focusing on that singular goal what people will do is they'll collect other goals along the way you know so they will say oh i want to focus on fat loss but then they're like oh but i also want to get this oh but i also want to get fitter here or i want to get stronger here and i want to do this and i want to do this and all of a sudden that singular goal has become a million goals you know and that's perfectly fine until it's preventing you from actually achieving your singular goal you know the original goal and of course you're more than welcome to change your original goal and that does happen quite a lot but if you have a goal and you want to achieve that goal keeping the goal in mind is how you're going to actually go about that right so again as i said having multiple goals it's perfectly fine like everyone does it like we're not you know robots where it's like let's execute this singular thing first and the singular command and then move on to the next thing if in a perfect ideal world that's probably how you would run things right however you know you are entitled to have multiple goals and that doesn't mean that these goals have to be uh, coherent they don't have to fit together or they don't have to be synergistic they don't have to enhance each other that's perfectly fine however if you can pick certain goals that are synergistic then you know this goal creep is actually something that can be quite beneficial for example if your goal is muscle gain you just want to get bigger all over right and then you happen to go oh i want to also get stronger at these three exercises you know that can be very synergistic to what you want to achieve your singular goal the the main goal of getting bigger you know that can be uh, enhanced by bringing in this goal of getting stronger as well all right however if your goal was to you know maximize your fat loss you're like i want to really get uh, as lean as i possibly can well then also having simultaneously this other goal of i want to get as strong as i possibly can then those two goals they start hindering each other because what happens is there's going to come a point where you're going to have to do things with your your diet your your overall training whatever it is that impacts on your ability to be strong right like you don't see people walking around three percent body fat while also squatting 900 pounds very very rare that that's i don't even think that's possible to be fair and um, that probably is realistically but you know it would be very 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 unlikely to actually occur all right and um, because the things you have to do to get to that very lean point are generally antagonistic to the things that you have to do to get to that very strong point all right so this concept of goal creep this is what happens to a lot of people they'll pick a million different goals and they'll try working on them all at the same time rather than actually achieving one goal right so effectively you become uh you get crap results in a multitude of things rather than getting good results in a, a handful of things or in a singular thing right so like i always think of it it's uh, if you switch to context it would be like someone picking uh, oh, I want to get good at learning a certain language, right? And rather than ever actually learning that language, they learned a few words and then picked a different language, learned a few words, picked a different language, learned a few words, and they're, they, they're not actually fluent in any singular language, but they know a few words from a lot of different things. And that's essentially this concept here, this, this goal creep concept, where, yeah, you might have a singular goal of, you know getting leaner or getting bigger or stronger or fitter or whatever it is but you never actually achieve that you get these kind of half-assed results because you've never actually singularly focused on maximizing uh, the results you can get from that singular goal instead what you've done is oh i'm going to choose all these different goals and you know i'm trying to ride you know two horses with one ass and it just doesn't work right so rather than having you know all of these different goals that you're trying to accomplish at the same time 
you're better off picking one or two of them, ideally you know, a few synergistic goals and working on those first while you put all the rest of them on the back burner and then when you've achieved these goals, then you work on the other ones, you know? Um, so yeah, as I said here, you know, you would try to accomplish a single goal before you move on to the next one, right? So rather than having, you know, 40 different open tabs on your browser, you have one tab open, you accomplish that, and then you open up the next tab, and then you do what you need to do on that, rather than going, oh, I'm looking up something, and you know, I have a million different things open, and you never actually read any of the things that are open. Again, the same concept applies with books. This is this is something that you see a huge amount. People will have entire libraries. You know, they'll have bookshelves full of books. You know, but they've only ever read like three or four pages of them, and they put them back, and they never actually get to them. You know, so you're you're not the goal is not to be a goal collector. You're not trying to collect all these goals and say, yeah, I'm working to be a powerlifter, or I'm working to be you know a marathon runner, or I'm working to be a bodybuilder, or I'm working to be a strongman, or I'm working to be leaner, or whatever. Like you picked all these goals, but you've never actually sat down, taken the time, designed up a program that focuses solely on that singular goal, right? And now this can seem. Uh, antagonistic to the topic that we often discuss which is being a generalist right and to be a good generalist it doesn't mean that you uh, or sorry you can say you can still be a generalist but that doesn't mean that you don't occasionally specialize all right so what i mean by that is you can be a generalist you can have generalistic goals you want to be good at a, a huge variety of different things right um but to do that you're going to have to go through periods of actually specializing on certain things before you can actually then call yourself a generalist, you know? Like, a generalist isn't shit at a lot of things. A generalist is good at a lot of things, you know? And it is far easier to maintain adaptations than it is to gain adaptations, right? So you might have to set up your training program, set up your diet, set up whatever it is to get these results, get these adaptations that you're looking to elicit. But that doesn't mean that that's how you have to keep things for the rest of your life. You know, you can do uh, effectively what you want to do is find the bare minimum that's needed to maintain those results or maintain those adaptations, you know, whether it's cardiovascular, muscular, neurological, you know, whatever it is, what's the, the bare minimum that you can do to maintain those adaptations. And that's all you need to do going forward once you've actually accomplished these adaptations, you know, for example, if you want to run, I don't know, a sub 20 minute uh, 5k, you know, that you're like, that's, that's my goal right now. And um, do what you need to do to get to that stage, you know, and then to maintain that, yeah, that might only be, you know, running once per week at that kind of pace, you know, whereas to get that, you might have had to do, you know, sprint intervals, you might have to do some longer and uh, distance stuff, you might have to do a lot of different uh, training modalities and specific uh, training protocols to get to that point where you're running that sub 20 minute 5k but to maintain it you only just have to occasionally do it you know and this is something that really messes with people's heads because they think the stuff that they need to do to get results is the stuff that they need to do to maintain results and that couldn't be further from the truth you know you might have to do a lot to get a little but you might have to do a little to maintain a lot you know um, and this is something that you know athletes especially who have like their sport that they're trying to get good at that are using the gym to to get good at that they sometimes have a better uh, approach to this because what they do is they have a defined off season where you know they're working on their strength they're working on their conditioning and all that kind of stuff and then during the in season they're like okay well what's the minimum i need to do to just keep things ticking along while i focus on you know actually competing in my sport you know um, and yet you probably will in that case lose adaptations because you're you're really focusing on something else but you know if you have things set up the, the strength loss the muscle loss the, the fitness loss or whatever it is you know it's probably unlikely to be very dramatic and i always have a, an approach where you know we want to build about 10 maybe even 20 percent more than what we wanted and um, just so when we're on this kind of maintenance it's literally i haven't touched this this thing in months weeks years whatever it is and i still have about 90 percent of what i got to you know so if you've already built a reserve of your 10 percent over where you need to be or 20 percent over where you need to be then you know dropping off 10 percent from that point you know it's kind of irrelevant and um, because you know you're always above where you need to be for example 
you might read somewhere and go like, okay, a double body weight squat is a, a good performance metric to have for X, Y, and Z sports, right? Um, and you go, okay, I'm going to really have to focus on this. Maybe you have to squat three, four, five times per week to get up to that body double body weight squat. You might have to do these lots of volume, lots of intensity, whatever it is that the training protocol you use to get to that. But then to get, I would recommend getting over that point, the double body weight, I would, you know, again, go 10, 20% above that and then put it on the back burner so that it's literally just maintaining. For example, in my case, like I know, like without squatting, for having done it for years, back squatting, I mean, you know, I, like I got up to in the 220s uh, with the back squat and I know right now, like, without ever training it i can just it just feels like it's on any day weight like i can put 180 on my back and at least do a single you know so and again that's double body weight for me um so you know th those adaptations that i built up you know i did definitely lose uh, from you know the the peak of where my strength was from that where i was really focusing on that because again 180 i used to be able to do like uh, a set of eight with that you know and you can look at that and go oh wow you, you like you lost a lot of strength however for me i'm like that the goal was never to always be peaked for that singular adaptation the goal was to have that as an adaptation to you know provide a stimulus for other adaptations you know and um, but anyway getting back to what you can actually do about this and we always use the, the kind of paradigm of you know identify isolate integrate and then improvise and now in this context improvise you don't really need to focus on it but the other three then they are the ones that we should really focus on to uh, actually overcome this goal creep you know so what you want to do is identify your goals right so like actually write them down like what are the, the goals that you have you know again it doesn't matter if it's very specific goals you're like oh i just want to you know i don't know uh bench 120 or something like that you know but write down all of the goals that you think that you have you know whether it's i want to compete in a powerlifting competition or i want to do mma or i want to do whatever it is write them all down like actually have a physical notepad beside you write them all down so that you can clearly see what you're supposedly trying to accomplish right and then pick you know a few of them ideally pick a few of them that are very synergistic um to the, a singular goal you know for example if you're like i want to do x y and z but i know to do that i need to lose some body fat right so body fat loss is the first goal right you're thinking okay well i still need to be in say a weight category for your sport so you need to gain muscle However, we're going to set up the protocol so that we lose the fat first and then we're going to slowly work on building the muscle over time. Now, that's not to say that you can't be building muscle while you're losing the fat. That's, you know, that's a, definitely a possibility. However, our focus is going to be on fat loss, right? So that's what you're doing. You're setting up things to really focus in on that singular goal, right? And then you uh, design an approach where, yeah, you might need to work on a, a few components of fitness where you might need, okay, I need some... Uh, you know, aer aerobic fitness, I might need some anaerobic fitness, I also need some uh, strength, I need some muscular endurance, there might be a whole host of things that you need for your specific goals. But you know, trying to focus on all of them at the same time is not how you approach a, a training program, you pick a few of them again, that are synergistic, um, or that makes sense to work on them at the same time. And um, you know, due to time constraints and stuff like that. And um, and you work on those until you've got the adaptations that you want. If you know you have to be at a certain strength level for your sport or whatever, or you, you know that that correlates with better performance or whatever, then working towards getting to that at the right time of year, it makes sense, you know? And again, this, this is something that everyone struggles with where they effectively try to do this scattergun approach and focus on, you know, a million different things, but never actually accomplish any singular thing. So do a little bit of an audit of what your goals are, do an audit of have you actually achieved those goals over the, the last few weeks, months, years, and if not, like, is the, the reason you haven't achieved them because you have this, this goal creep going on, you know, where you're trying to I, I, I'm trying to build muscle, but I'm also actually trying to lose fat, but I'm actually, I wouldn't mind, you know, improving my, you know, cardiovascular fitness here. And I, I wouldn't mind also, you know, working on strength and I, and I wouldn't mind also, you know, learning these new skills. And it's just, you know, you're never actually focusing in on ever accomplishing a singular goal. So again, this is not to say that you can't have generalized goals. That's perfectly fine. However, what you do need to do is take a step back and have a, a, an identify isolate and an integrate approach to this you know you want to identify the the goals that you have you want to isolate those and actually work on those and then you work in 
that integration of keeping those adaptations, again, that maintenance phase of those adaptations to your longer term approach to training. All right. So I hope that helps, guys. Again, if you ever have any questions or anything, you can always drop them below the video um, or again, join the Facebook community. That is where we have larger discussions on topics such as this.